see, in, uh, at this point in the day, so we haven't ordered the food yet. So what happens is if you want to buy a little more time and you didn't quite hear what your date wanted, you, when the waiter comes by, you go, just give us a couple more minutes, if that's okay. And then you say, so what look, looks good to you? And then you'll say the chicken. The chicken marsala. The chicken marsala. Say, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. And then when he comes by again, you're like, ah, he'll have the chicken marsala, and I'll have the um, chicken tiki. Yeah. You order for them, and it's like, oh, nice. <laughs> it is classy, because I, I just shivered a little. <laughs> so, so these little tips, I'm telling you, these little tips. And then, oh, I'll get to that. I've got more. I don't we're want to tell you everything. Play my play. I don't want to tell you everything because then you're on a date, you're doing it, you're like, did Habercorn teach you this? You're like, whoa! <laughs> oh. Okay, let's see. My Habercorn method. Let's see. He's totally taking me out after this, whether he knows it or not. <laughs> I just want to be in a restaurant and I want you to order for me. That's Look out, cool. baby, because here I come. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't know what is it. Uh, that's it. Oh, what is on your bedside table? What's on my bedside table? Two <laughs> people. Incorrigible. <laughs> Usually a book. <laughs> that was just strange. <laughs> well, what book? Um, depends. I think right now on my book I'm reading, uh, I'm reading The Secret History by Donna Tartt. It's, shut up, it's, a, it's a fiction, I like to read it. I've got like, My Little Pony's Adventures, I'm like, it's like, theory is like a chip chip. Are you sleeping in a crib? Yes. Is it a race car bed? Don't it's a race car bed, isn't it? I have problems. <laughs> no, I have problems. Um, he goes up to my door and he hears, <laughs> he peeks in, I'm like, I mean, he tons out of the covers with a flashlight, like, and you're like, Todd? Like, Todd, you've got school tomorrow, you need to get in bed. I'm sleeping. How could you be sleeping if you just answered me? That little kid logic, where they think if they shut their eyes, oh, they're invisible. <laughs> you can't see me. Uh, yeah, there was a thing when you were a kid, you're like, oh, if there's like the monster in the closet, you're like, okay, if you put your head under the covers, like, if I can't see them, they can't see me. I love that monster's thing, but the monster's like, I'll wait. <laughs> like, it's okay, I'm gonna come up here sometime. <laughs> <laughs> like, the monsters are like, where do you go? Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, like, something kind of cool and, and relevant to, to the convention that's currently on my bedside table is I found um, a figure, a uh, cast figure of Scar. So now, when I wake up in the morning, he's like the first thing I look at. <laughs> I'm kind of sitting there going, oh, and I'm like, oh, hey, Scar. <laughs> Today's gonna be a good day. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do I want to ask you? Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> Is that I like this one because this is always okay. <laughs> Worst movie you have ever seen Whoa. and why? Worst movie I've ever seen and why? Now, see, that's a very slippery slope because there are worse movies that you watch again and again and you don't know why. But then there's a worse movie that you watch. You, you don't even get through all the way, and then you're done with it. I can't, what is that movie? Um, okay, I'm gonna say, any Steven Seagal movie from 99 on, or, well, for that matter, any Steven Seagal movie. Um, <laughs> maybe, there was one with the seals and the oil and Michael Caine. On Deadly Ground. Um, <laughs> there was also uh, any Paris Hilton movie. Uh, maybe a any Robin Williams movie from 03 on, or, or any movie after we figured out he only has a dramatic version and a funny version of himself, but he keeps doing the dramatic version. There's um, a funny happy puppy dog and there's like, hi, I'm, I'm a Williams, I better talk like this. Yeah. Like, like he's trying to do a bad Sean Connery impression. Jack. But there's, um, yeah, there are a lot of bad movies. Like, what about you? I can't think, movies. I can't. I have a lot of, I have a, I love bad movies because I think I figured out a long time ago there's more of them than good movies and so you might as well like what's easier to find. And, and, uh, I, I'm very picky too, like I'm, I'm a horrible person to sit down and watch a movie with because I will nitpick and be like, well that's just ridiculous, why would they, why would they do that? I'm like, that's like my mom when someone tries to tell a joke. I'm like, okay, first of all, she says, 
Moses, Jesus, and a rabbi would never be playing golf together in the Hamptons, so this joke makes no sense. You've lost me already. I'm that way with movies, but I think my favorite is there's a movie called Airport, like 67, I think it is. I don't even remember the title. I just know it's Airport, and it's the, the, the airplane movies, you know, those, those airplanes. It's the, that's the airport, and there's like many of them. There's like four of air, there's four airport movies. That's the, those are the movies that those are lampooning, and I love it because in the first one, which is the only one I've watched all the way through, Dean Martin, who's like the world's best drunk, is the pilot. So it's like party airlines, but it's got also the most like anticlimactic ending where there's like been a hole blown into the plane from this bomb, and they're are they going to be able to land? Are they going to you know the whole thing is are we going to is the plane just going to burst into flames when we touch down? And the plane is coming in, and everyone in the tower is like, okay, you're doing this, and every you know the music is intense, and everyone on the plane has got their masks on and they're take, assuming the position. You know, all these character actors are waiting, just like you know, oh god. And the plane comes in, and the music, da -da 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 and it touches down, and nothing happens. <laughs> like the only thing that movie required to be like the perfect funny movie was for like the last shot to be Dean Martin like manning the wheel, just turning the camera, and going, ah! and then the credits. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't all that bad. So that's my. But there are many, many, many bad movies, but like that's the first one that comes to mind. Uh, I love the chicken marsala. I love the chicken tiki. Thanks. Uh, another one. Please. See, there you just ease right into it. Ease right into it, right there. And then there's that magical time when it's like, okay, well the bread's gone, you don't really want to fill up on the bread, and then the meals haven't come yet, and then they're with the ball's in your court. Even if you put the ball in their court, it's always got to be in your court. Always. So then you ask a question like, what's the dumbest purchase you've ever made? The dumbest purchase I've ever made? These are weird day questions. <laughs> It's like, yeah, my dating like, account, like, what's the dumbest purchase you've ever made? That's yeah. a weird, I don't, that's a good one. Uh, let me think about that. The dumbest purchase I've ever made. There's been a lot of them. I'm trying to think. Hang on, there's gotta be something. I make stupid purchases all the time, and I convince myself that they're not dumb by going, no, this is totally coming back. Laserdisc is coming back, I'm telling you. Like, no, I think, hmm. My third car was my dumbest purchase. What was your third car? My third car was a Ford Taurus. Go ahead, go on that. Exactly. The reason that was, was a stupid first purchase, car. it was also my second car. <laughs> so I should have known by then that that was not the way to go. Like, I realized driving off that lot that my car immediately decreased in blue book value by like 100%. <laughs> and you look in your rear view mirror and see the guy that sold you the car going, <laughs> That was a dumb purchase. That car lasted me all of three years before it finally just had to be put down. Like, I had to take it out back and shoot it behind the bar, and that car was, like, ridiculous. That was the dumbest purchase. And then when I sold that car, seriously, like, I don't know if it had you know, bought a car or, like, changed them in. I drove that car to buy a new one, and, like, it was on its last leg. I kind of trundled into the shop and was like, all right, I want to sell this car and buy a new one. And I looked at me and, like, you may just want to scrap this. I'm like, you could probably sell the tires for more than you could sell the car. I'm like, no, I don't want to get it again. And, and like, I, I, my, the trade-in value on that car after three years was $120. <laughs> oh, I like the 97 GMC Jimmy. Ouch, 1997, that was like decades ago. <laughs> But yeah, so that was the dumbest purchase. And what's funny is like like a week later, I saw that car like with someone else driving it. I'm like, someone's financing that now. <laughs> so that's my dumbest purchase, one of many, but that's the one that comes to mind. Well, my, for, my Taurus, it broke down in front of the dealership. And that's why, that's why we got another car at the time because it literally broke down in front of the dealership and we had no, we just had to go. My mom was like, all right, well, let's go get another car. She's a type, my mom is a type of woman that, that's when we got an Avalon. She goes, she goes into the dealership, she goes, is that car available in black? And they're like, yeah, she goes, no car. And she takes out her checkbook and she writes for the whole amount. She's like, here we go, take it. They're like, do you want to find it? No, just take it, son, take the check. She drives up a lot, boom, that's it.